Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously excited to uh, to have him on board. Um, been a fan of his from his game for a long long time now, and uh, admired his game from a long time. So uh, to be able to uh, to come out and uh, and put some work in here on the first day uh, it was exciting. Good start for us. Uh, a long way to go, but you know, starting to build that relationship you know, day one. Him, I guess during his visit, I guess it was a month ago, what was the process waiting to see where he was going to end up and how did you find out he was coming aboard? Yeah, it was, uh, it was a waiting game, just like it was for everybody, you know. Um, had had some good time together uh, a month ago or whatever it was, uh, and then uh, just kind of waited through the process, communicated with him, you know, every so often I'd check in, hey, you know, what are we thinking, how are we, how are we looking, uh, where are things at, and um, was excited to get that, that call from Vrabel. Uh, to let me know that uh, that it was going to happen. So uh, definitely, uh, you know, it was a wait and see game, but uh, excited to have him on board. What does he add, Ryan, that you guys didn't previously have in that? Do what? What does he add that you guys didn't previously have in that? I think he adds a, a veteran presence who's who's played at a high level for a long time. You know, he's uh, he's a guy who's played a lot of football, been successful, you know, his whole career. Uh, obviously, uh, unbelievable hands, catch radius. I think understanding of how to get himself open versus different coverages, different looks. Uh, so it gives that that veteran uh, guy who's been there and done that to, to lead that room. I know you trust guys to go get it. Is he may be as trustworthy a guy as there is in terms of contested catches and ability to go into small windows and, and protect you. Yeah, no question. I mean, you've seen it over the years as, you know, doesn't look like he's open, but he's able to come down with the football time and time again. Uh, just being able to, to build that trust here, you know, through the, uh, through the training camp, um, you know, see, see where I can put the ball, where he can go get it. And um, you know where he likes it, that type of thing. So um, you know, excited to, uh, to go to work and, and keep building on what we started today. With that style so, of play and the way he specializes in, it, does it like take a little bit more development of that trust? Like, does it require more trust? Yeah, I mean, trust trust is a big part of playing the quarterback position. You know, whether you know it's a guy like D Hop or uh, anybody else. You know, you have to play with trust in order to uh, to make plays. And the more trust you have, ultimately, the more plays you make. So. Uh, Got to start developing that trust. You know, we've uh, already been talking through a lot of the concepts and how I see things and, and how how we expect the routes to be run. So um, it's going to be a growing process. We're going to have to put a lot of work in, a lot of time in, uh, but excited to start that process. Right, when it's veteran on veteran, does it help accelerate all that whole process stuff too? I think so. You know, I think he knows I've seen a lot of football. He's seen a lot of football. Now it's just about getting on the same page and, and seeing it through the same set of eyes uh, in this offense, right? He's been in a version of this before. Um, He's been in probably several offenses at this point, but uh, just making sure we're seeing it the same way. He yeah, mentioned some of the things, like he said you have to do things off the field in order to develop that relationship. From your perspective, like what's an example of some of the off the field things that you could do? Be careful now, I'll come back and get you, <laughs> piss him off. Um, yeah, it's just time, right? You're spending time uh, being able to, to go over the offense, go over things, go over football things off the field. You can't hit everything on the field. You're not going to get a rep of everything, every coverage, every look. So being able to talk through those things in the meeting room, after practice, before practice, um, and then just spending time together, getting to know each other, getting to uh, just develop that relationship. What Kevin did to help bring DeAndre in here from his deal, how much does that resonate in the locker room? Well, it's huge. You know, obviously adding a guy uh, like DeAndre to, uh, to this team is going to help us. So. Um, you know, thankful that, that we were able to get done, and I think Kevin doing doing what he did was a, was a part of that. So, obviously, um, you know, Kevin has been a, a big part of this team uh, since I've been here. Um, played as well as any safety in the league uh, over that time period. So, uh, you know, excited to have Kevin, and um, thankful that, uh, that they were able to work it out. What's a two year challenge, I guess, to the, your teammates? Maybe as you kick off training camp, and what's important to remember as you go through this six week build up before the season starts? I take advantage of every opportunity we get. Take advantage of every day. It's a grind. Um, you know, there's highs, there's lows during training camp. We got to stay the course. Stay the course. Come out with a focus each and every day. Um, have something to focus on. Uh, get better each and every day. You know, whether it's you know timing on a, a three-step footwork or uh, for a receiver. You know, being able to plan off the uh, the inside foot on an outbreak or whatever the case may be. Just having something. You can't focus on everything every single day, right? But being able to focus on something every single day, you start stacking those things together. Um, you're growing as a person, you're growing as a player, and then you start building the team, right? We start all doing that together. We're pushing each other. We're, we're going through a tough thing together, battling through the highs, battling through the lows, 
and uh, just starting to gel as a team. You know, those are some things you want to accomplish during this time. When you go through it as many times as you have, it's probably old hat, but how much of a challenge is it with a new offense uh, with Tim Kelly's brought in and with a completely overhauled offensive line to work behind? Training camp's tough, but training camp is a crucial time of the year uh, to come out and grow as a player um, and to grow as a team. You know, individually, we have to all focus on different things, like I said, that we want to get better at. Then we have to grow as a team. You know, we have to start building that trust, that chemistry, uh, you know, within the offensive line. You know, those guys trusting each other on the combo blocks, on, in the pass protection. Quarterbacks trusting the offensive line in the pocket. Quarterbacks trusting receivers. Receivers trusting the quarterback that the ball is going to be in the right spot. So it all works together, and it all takes time and, and repetition to do that. So um, the fact that we have time is great, but we have to take advantage of the time we have. You haven't had much time to work with Jamarco Jones in, in the past. Seeing him out there on your right side just for a couple of days, you have an initial feeling for him. And did you get any kind of feel for him last year, being around him at all, or, or was it a complete wash? I mean, it's not a wash. You know, I got to know him a little bit. Uh, obviously, excited to have him back. Um, you know, he went through a lot of adversity last year uh, with with his injury, uh, the ups and the downs with that, and, and the repeats and everything he dealt with was tough. And you know, he felt for the guy. Um, just seeing him in there working his tail off on a daily basis in the training room, you know, rehabbing and then uh, having having everything he had to deal with. So uh, you feel for that, but excited to have him back out there. Um, you know, seeing him grow just in, in the first couple of days. You know, he was here early with us, so I uh, was able to see see some reps and see him grow just in the first few days uh, of being out there. So um, done some good things so far. Excited to have him back out there and excited for or for what he can do. He's talking about talking trust. the other day about uh, how uh, DeAndre is a guy who sometimes you know doesn't run the route exactly the way it's done up in a playbook. Is that an example of uh, the relationship that you guys have to form so you can kind of figure out what you might be doing? Yeah, no question. You know, you have a veteran guy who's, like I said, able to, to get himself open in, in different uh, different situations. So uh, just building that trust on on knowing, all right, when he does have the freedom to to create on his own, and then when, all right, I'm expecting you in this window in this timing, right? So it's a balance of, of being able to use his playmaking ability and, and spatial awareness and all those types of things, but then also how does it fit within the picture as a whole, right? So. Uh, we're going to be working through that, you know, throughout uh, throughout training camp. But um, no doubt, excited to have his playmaking ability as a part of our offense. When you talk about trust, how much more trust do you have now in both Chig and Trayvon than you did when they were rookies last year? A lot, you know, when they're coming in, uh, you're getting to know them. They're they're kind of swimming right early on as a rookie. Uh, you're kind of swimming, trying to figure things out. Um, you know, Traylon was was battling through some things early on, which which uh, you know slowed us down a little bit. But um, he's had a great off season. He, he's worked his tail off. Uh, was able to to work with both of those guys down in Florida this summer, and um, excited for the the growth that they both had. Um, you know, now understanding what it's like to go through an NFL season, understanding uh, what I'm expecting from them uh, on different plays, and um, now it's it's to the point where we can just let their their natural playmaking ability. You know, take the field and, and take over because super talented guys, uh, both in their own regard. And um, when you understand what's going on, when you understand where to line up, what QB is expecting, you can play fast. And when you're playing fast with the talent that those guys have, then uh, you put a lot of pressure on the defense. You had mentioned Aaron Brewer in OTAs and then he kept just spending a lot of time even with you guys in the room. Um, how do you feel like he is progressing and, and you know, how do you continue that kind of chemistry there with you guys? Yeah, he's done a great job. Like I said in the spring, you know, he's been a leader in that room for us, uh, putting in the time, coming in early with the QBs, um, getting a, a grasp on what we're asking from from the center in this offense, um, being on the same page with the quarterback and all the different mic points and adjustments and protections and everything like that. So, um, really happy and thankful for the work that he's put in over the course of the spring. And, and just like everyone else, you know, have to have to keep the foot on the gas and keep going as we uh, as we get into training camp here. And um, and keep not only pushing yourself but pushing the guys around you. Ryan, has Netflix approached you about uh, quarterback season two? Um, not season two, no, not season two. Uh, you know, had some conversations last year, but um, you know, not season two. Just your thoughts? Did you see it at all, Ryan? Um, did you see quarterback yet? I haven't seen it. You know, I, I want to watch it. It's not that I I don't have an interest. I definitely have an interest, and in, uh, we'll get around to watching it at some point. But um, when it came out over the summer. I was in a house that didn't even have Wi-Fi, so uh, 
I was living in the Stone Ages there for a few weeks and uh, just haven't got around to, uh, to catching up. Was that intentional? Did you go away from Wi-Fi? No, it wasn't intentional at all. My wife was losing her mind, actually. Uh, I didn't mind it so much. You know, I didn't love it, but I didn't mind it. Uh, but my wife, you know, started twitching, you know, scratching the neck a little bit. Uh, but hopefully next year we have Wi-Fi at the house. Well, there's so many mentions like Cheek and, and, and Traylon there. Uh, the domino effect of signing DeAndre, how does that help Cheek and, and Traylon more this year, do you think? Yeah, when you add a playmaker, uh, it, I think, takes some pressure off, takes uh, some eyes off of, you know, right? The defenses are going to have to account for, for everybody now. They can't uh, focus on any one guy. Um, and then off the field, you know, just being able to see, you know, how he goes about his business, um, what he brings to the table, how he creates on the field, I think is only going to help uh, the room and help the offense and other guys, other skill positions uh, as a whole. So um, not only is he going to help us on the field between the lines, but I think he's going to help other guys grow as well. Did you give any serious consideration to any offer from Netflix for last year? Yeah, definitely gave it, uh, gave it serious consideration, but, you know, it didn't work out. Ryan, going into your final year of your can contract, do you feel with all the changes that have been made that you've been maybe put in the best position to help you and this offense uh, do what they everyone wants to do? I'm excited. I'm excited for this year, excited for the opportunity we have, the pieces we have, um, excited for the guys that we have, and, and the opportunity, like I said, what we have in front of us now. Uh, a lot of work to be done. Uh, have to uh, keep working, doing the right things day in and day out, on the field, off the field. but. Excited for the opportunity and the pieces that we have. Thank you. Thank you. Happy birthday. Maybe the second time around, how do you feel like maybe you helped out the, the team in that Yeah, I, I spoke to you guys, you know, earlier in the off season. Told you guys we were in a good place. Um, I didn't speak. To, I didn't speak to you guys about it, but I kind of did it on the on the podcast, whatever. About you know, really not, you know, making this an emotional thing. Really just trying to make the best out of the situation that you're presented with. That's what I've done my whole life. Um, so obviously, you know, the restructure the contract. But one thing I do know that it was, you know, it definitely helps out the team a lot. And uh, at the end of the day, we're trying to build a championship roster. And I wouldn't have came back here, or I wouldn't have done what I've done if I didn't think that, you know, we would have an opportunity to go win some ball games. So that's what it was about for me, and I'm happy to be back. Uh, I've told you guys multiple times, this is my legacy. I wanted to be here, so uh, just glad we was able to get it done. What do you mean? The, the money is, is moved around in a way that if you play this year, next year under this contract, you come out this year the same. Yeah, I mean, you know, we'll deal with next year when next year comes around. Um, as of right now, I'm just going to focus on this year and trying to make the best out of this year as I possibly can, help this team win a championship uh, and play my behind off of this team. That's what I've said. It's my job to be the best safety I possibly can be. And, uh, you know, we'll deal with next year as next year comes. Yeah, at the end of the day, it's all about winning ball games, and you kind of understand it as you get older as a player, uh, the business side of football, and being able to build a championship roster, and that's what it's about here. It's about winning ball games. It's not about, you know, at times it's, it's times to be selfish, but at the end of the day, it's about building a team, and I, I'm a team leader, and I want to win first and foremost. I've said this multiple times. I want to help bring a championship to Nashville, uh, and that's what we plan on doing this year. Yeah, it's always new. It's always a new feeling. It's always, you know, new opportunities, new energy. Obviously, you know, some of the guys that I'm used to being here with, Ben Jones, Taylor Lewan, those guys aren't here. So still learning our team, learning new teammates, you know, building the culture that we've always had, but obviously with some new guys added in. Uh, so it's exciting. It's an exciting opportunity, uh, and, and that's what I'm excited about. KB, you got, you know, you're coming off seven losses then last season. There was a weird offseason for you and Derek and Ryan and a lot of guys around. Do you think there's some motivation in that for some of, you, some of the older guys on this team when, when how this is set up here? Yeah, I think for any great player and all great players, every single year you have to find something to motivate you, keep that chip on your shoulder. And for all of us on this team, not just me, Ryan, Derek, but for everybody, some guys are getting new opportunities, coming from other teams, coming here, getting an opportunity to play. Some young guys are getting older, second year, third year, fourth year, whatever. And we're all trying to fight for everything we can get. And that's what it's about. I think that's the energy and the type of culture that Mike Vrabel wants here, uh, that everybody is scratching and clawing and, and trying to earn everything every single day. And that's what it's about. You don't want to have anybody get complacent, uh, including myself, guys that have proven in this league. Uh, there's no time 
and there's no space for complacency here in this building. Right, you, you went through the end of last season and you kind of saw some of the things that maybe they did in the draft. Were you worried at any point that you were going to go through a rebuild, this team wasn't going to try to keep the current window open? I mean, I think if you, if you look if you looked at what the media was saying, I'm not saying you guys particularly, but just being on Twitter and Instagram, uh, that's the only thing that was going around. Um, but I knew for myself, just obviously being in this building, being around this team, uh, certain moves had to be made. Uh, you kind of understand that the longer you're in this business, that you know cuts are going to happen. Some guys that been here for a while are going to move on. Um, some guys are going to retire. Those things happen. Um, but I was always confident in the guys that we had already. Um, I think sometimes... You know, we kind of get caught up on name recognition and, oh, we want to bring this guy in and those guys in. But, you know, when you have a, a culture that we have here as a team, um, that's the most important thing to try to keep intact. Like, I know last year we definitely, you know, we didn't end the year well at all. You know, we kind of got on the losing streak. But, you know, when you kind of look back at it, we were still maybe a drive or, you know, a few minutes away, you know, a bad play here from still making it to the playoffs. So uh, I know we ended bad, but at the end of the day, uh, I still believe in the guys that we have. Yeah, I mean, he's a different type of uh, athlete, different type of player, uh, an elite player. He's been an elite player for a long time in his league. Obviously, I've battled with him years from Houston and uh, was able to see him firsthand in practice against Arizona last year. He made an incredible red zone catch last year. It kind of made me walk off. It was crazy. Um, but, yeah, I mean, adding a guy like him is big time for us. Obviously, to be able to mentor some of the young guys. But, you know, anytime you can add a weapon like him, and it'll, that'll help guys like Traylon, that'll help guys like Kyle Phillips and everybody else that we have out there. So, and, you know, giving Ryan more options. Um, at the end of the day, I know, you know, Tim Kelly wants to throw the ball over the field, but at the same time, we still got Derek in the backfield. So uh, just as a new uh, level of as far as what defense has the game plan for us uh, as a whole team. What's the, thing, what's the first thing you said to him when, you, when he came walking in the door? He actually came up to me first. Introdu obviously, we already knew each other, but we kind of said what's up. And, you know, I tell all the guys, I've been here so long, I say, if you need anything around Nashville, I got you. So, uh, now nah, he's a cool guy. Uh, for me personally, just being around him definitely seems humble, seems very approachable, uh, and that's what you like from a guy. Obviously, in his first couple of days here, he's speaking to everybody, being really good. Um, so it's been it's been good so far. When you add a guy of that caliber, what does that do for the overall team confidence? Yeah, I mean, the more great players you can have, the better you know the better it's going to be. Uh, and obviously, the first you know the first day out here, he's made some plays, made some catches. Uh, it it definitely brings a different type of energy. But for myself personally, I understand that the work still has to get put in. Uh, you know, I remember, you know, a couple of years ago, we brought Julio in and all those guys. Everybody's super excited. But, you know, sometimes, you know, guys deal with injuries and things like that. So for, for me personally, I just try to focus on what I can focus on, uh, trying to get better. And I know and I trust that everybody's going to do the exactly the same. So it definitely brings a, a, some energy, some confidence. But at the same time, you know, just playing games on paper isn't going to win anything. We got to put the work in. You know, it, it never really got to that point. Um, you know, like I said, I don't really want to speak on the entire process of how everything worked. But, I mean, like I said earlier, man, just happy to be back, happy to be able to, you know, obviously help the team. But at the same time, you know, for me, it's all about a great opportunity. I have a great opportunity in front of me uh, to be able to go out here and, and be the best player I can be possibly and uh, just help this team. And like you said, whatever going forward can happen, you know, at the end of the day. But we're just trying to make the best out of the situation and go out here and win ball games. Do you think that was fair, given the fact that your compensation among safeties in the league is pretty much where everybody has you pinned as a safety in the league, and then to take less compensation than where you're kind of pegged as a safety? How did that make you feel? Uh, you know, it really didn't make me feel anything. Because like I said, I don't think it was – you know, in this business, you know, you, you can't let your emotions get tied into it. Um, you know, rather if it's fair, not fair, you know, life isn't fair sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, you take what's in front of you, you make the best out of it, and look at everything as a positive and, and, a, and a great opportunity. So that's how I always viewed everything that I've been through in my life from when I was a kid to I am now, and that's how I'm always going to view things. So I'm not really going to get into if it's negative, if it's bad, is it fair, do I deserve what I don't deserve. Uh, I'm going to earn everything that I can get and uh, – that's going to be my mindset going forward for the rest of my life. Maybe what makes you believe that the secondary can be better than it was last season when you guys didn't give up a lot of yards and whatnot? 
what, what, what have you seen to this point? Obviously, it's early, but what, what gives you that confidence? Yeah, I mean, one thing I will say, uh, just having Chris Harris around, our DB coach, um, he's a really good coach. Uh, really like his energy. Uh, love the things we're doing as far as on the defensive back. I mean, as far as in the secondary, uh, some different things we're going to do. Uh, brings me a lot of confidence, honestly. Uh, me and Amani talk about it a lot, some things that we're doing. Uh, we see a lot of plays being made on that back end, and uh, we've set lofty goals for ourselves. Um, at the end of the day, as bad as we was last year, we can't do nothing but go up, and we plan on going uh, really, really, uh, really high, is what I would say. I feel like we can be great. Um, at the end of the day, uh, you know, I know sometimes the stats don't really show everything, um, but, you know, last year, obviously, you know, the past defense, what it was. But I feel like we was a really good defense last year. But, you know, with those guys we have on the front seven, some of the guys that he brought in, like Arden Key, Shazir, and all these guys, uh, or Aziz, I, I think that just overall, you know, it's going to improve. Like, I'm telling you, I just, I just have a lot of confidence in ourselves. And uh, like I said, I don't want to make any predictions or nothing like that, but just feel really good about the guys we have. How much help could A.J. Moore bring? You say what again? How much help could A.J. Moore bring? Well, I just think he brings another presence that obviously he was here last year. Obviously, this guy, you know, battled some adversity early towards Achilles and things like that. And he's battled himself and he had a workout yesterday. And I, I think it went really well. So uh, just glad to have him back. I know he's, you know, still working his way back or whatever. But I um, think he's going to be a great just veteran presence for some of these young guys. And obviously, he's going to be able to help us out on special teams. Uh, that's something he's been really good at since he's been in the league. You mentioned that you guys, he was he's really familiar with you from high school. Yeah. What are some of the things you remember from high school days with, with Arden? So Arden got to my high school, I think maybe a year after I left. Uh, so he actually played with my younger brother who was there as well. Um, but just remember him being a dog. My little brother was talking about him all the time. Like, we got this guy named Arden Key, he's a beast. He was getting a lot of sacks, he was going to LSU, and obviously he's where he's at now. Proud of him, uh, but just his energy. He's a goofball, but at the same time, when it's time to work, uh, it's time to work and he brings energy. So you talk more now? Uh, so like I said, I wasn't actually a teammate with him, but like I said, I just heard about it. Uh, so obviously, I think he talks more now because I was just hearing it from through the grapevines and stuff what like that. What about the Oilers, Junie? Uh, you got a chance to kind of try them on. What, what do you think, and how's it going to feel representing those? Best throwbacks in the league. You know, I know a lot of teams are doing the throwbacks and all these different things. Um, I think they look really good, uh, especially with the red, uh, the red face mask. It's going to look really cool. Definitely want to win some games in those right there. Uh, maybe convince Amy to try to bring those back a little bit more often in the future. They're upset in Houston, they're upset in Houston about it. You sympathetic at all? I mean, no. Nah, I mean, I wasn't even. I don't think I was born when they was playing back there in Houston with the Oilers jersey. And if I was, I was a little kid. So, uh, don't really have any anything to add on to those guys that are salty. It is what it is. I mean, can't get mad because we're you know it's the same franchise. So what do you want? What do you want us to do? <laughs> I think you should actually. I think you do. I'm trying to convince them out there today, so we'll see. Not a lot of experience behind you and Edmonton safety, Kevin. What's, how, how's it looking for a guy like Elijah? You know, what, what's that transition like for him? And maybe how's he learning you know, when, when he does take some safety? Stuff? Yeah, Elijah's a very smart player. He's one of the most versatile players we have on the defense. He can play safety, play nickel, play corner. Uh, and he's, like you said, he's been, he's been grinding away. And like I spoke about earlier, just the opportunities that we all have in front of us to go out here and try to help this team. And I think we've all kind of bought into that mentality. What's, what's kind of the hardest thing, you know, when you're so long used to playing corner, maybe trying a little bit of safety now too. We'll yeah, just a lot more space back there, uh, a lot more ground you have to cover, a little bit of different techniques and things like that. But like I said, I think Elijah, he's, he's always been a versatile player. Uh, so he's always been able to play in space, playing that nickel. Uh, so like I said, I think he can play in any position on the back end for sure. Thank Thanks, you, guys. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Number 27, Mike, I'm just saying. Four. <laughs> <laughs> just, hey, hey, hey. That's t anyway. Uh, Getting DeAndre out on the field, uh, first day camp, getting a chance to take a look at him, and you know, obviously early his first time on the field. What what did you see out of him? And early chemistry, uh, starting with uh, Ryan. Yeah, again, it was everybody's first day. I think the, getting the group together was great. I thought there was great energy. I thought there was enthusiasm. I thought there was some, you know, a lot of things to to teach off of, and it was a good start. Um, you know, Hop was a part of that. Just like everybody else that we had out there, the 85 or so guys else that were out there. So, you know, that's where these guys are going to continue to build chemistry in all three phases and quarterbacks, that relationship and understanding with the receivers is, you know, important. So when he's back here in a day or so, then we'll, we'll um, 
you know, be able to continue to work with them. With Ryan going into the final year of his deal, his veteran experience and focus, uh, do you like the way that he can lead this offense in this year with all the pieces and all the changes that have been made around him? Sure. I mean, that's the quarterback's job is to, is to be an extension of the coaching staff and to, to carry that message and the details and make sure that everybody's lined up and the operation, it starts with the quarterback and, and their command. And you know, that's nothing new for Ryan. So. And we just have to, to to make sure that he's doing that, and then and, and that Malik and Will are doing that, and you know saw instances of that where you know maybe guys had to go in there and play a different position, and he lined them up, moved them in. Whether I don't know, maybe that was Malik or whoever it was did that. So uh, those are the things that we need. Who's your offseason award winners end up being, and how important for those guys to kind of build on that momentum in camp? So offensively. Uh, Thomas Otakoya uh, made great strides, effort, uh, consistency, and improvement. Uh, put a lot of time in, and you know, starting out with that international program, and, and it's been fantastic for us. And he's improved, so he was one of them. Uh, Ryan was one of them. I would say that that Malik was was very very close. Uh, can only give so many of them, but outstanding effort and improvement from him. In, in conditioning and the weight room and the field and just the package. Uh, and then the last one offensively was Corey Levin. You know, put a lot of time in and, and did a nice job defensively. Uh, Jaden Peavy, a young player that uh, noticeably different. And uh, it was good to see that carry over to, to conditioning test and today uh, and what he did in the spring. Uh, Dr. Gibby and then Arden Key. Well, I think when you coach players and they ask for feedback, and, and again, I really, you know, you can learn a lot from, from great coaches. And, and for me to not think that Nick Saban is, a, is an, one of the best coaches that ever wore a whistle is, is ridiculous. And so he says something all the time that, that really average players want to be left alone and good players want to be coached and great players want to be told the truth. And I think it's like, Man, if we can just live in that world where everybody just, hey, what was this? What is this? What else do I need? What do I need to do to improve? Where do I stand? And they can they can seek the truth. They can handle the truth. And then, you know, we always want to tell the truth. And so that's what we did the entire off season. We'll continue to do that. And, and Malik took those things and it, just his appearance, his attitude, smiling and just playing football. So. And again, playing quarterback in this league as a young player is, is something very different. And so I think that experience at offseason has helped him, and then we'll continue to, to get, work with him and improve. Mike, from the start of the offseason workouts through now and then into the first game, how much differently have you structured anything because to try to limit injuries have you made? You know, how, how many changes did you make because of that? Did we miss you the other day, Gentry? Maybe so. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> Pretty sure. Um, so again, last year we, we tried to do that and we've always tried to go two on and, and, and try to pull back on that third day where maybe historically or some of the data would tell you that the volumes, you know, getting too high. And we started out in a, in a jog through last year and then looking at the data, it was like hard to keep the receivers from running a certain, you know, mile per hour. So. We, we've just adjusted those to, to be in walkthroughs. Um, we're still going to work. We're still going to practice. We're going to still, you know, hold up to our standards of, of what we feel like is important. But we're going to try to, on that third day, continue with our installation, but still come out here uh, in the morning or whatever time at 10 and, and, and walk through uh, the installation. I mean, we can't just take a day off. We have to continue with the installation and make sure that we're progressing on into third down and red zone and two minute. But that'll that'll be a little different in that regard, just the, the volume um, on that third day. What attracted you to Marco when you made your initial connection way back when you were recruiting? And what do you think of him now, having fought through what he fought through last year and being in position to maybe go take the job? Well, uh, just a, an athlete, watched him play basketball in high school, got to know him. and. 
uh, his mom. Um, then he came to Ohio State. I went to Houston. And, and again, you make a lot of connections um, and relationships in, in life and certainly in, in coaching and recruiting. So, you know, that was another example of that. Um, that w I would say in the free agent process, there was some versatility. You know, played all across the front uh, for Seattle. Um, and then, you know, like you alluded to, um, you know, had a setback, had an injury, you know, tried to, you know, try to come back and it you know, wasn't going to be possible. And so now he's you know, going to try to take advantage of the, the opportunity that he has. At that same position, John Ojuku, or as you call him, OJ. OJ, what it's a hell he of a lot easier. Yeah, <laughs> seriously. But what has he done, you know, coming in as a rookie undrafted yep. free agent to earn some of the significant reps? He was probably in the, in the five years or now going on six, going through that post-draft process of being excited, knew how we played, knew what our demeanor wanted it to be, um, has come in, he's learned, he's a smart player, he's got good length. Um, and so you know, he, he shows up and by being out there every day, we, we tell him that they can do you know, three things. They can improve, they can uh, take advantage of an opportunity if it's there and then they can be evaluated. So you know, that's where he's at, just getting started. Talk about Jack. You talk about Jack Gibby. The last two years with guys. How refreshing is it for you to have a healthy ninety, Harold? It's the first day. <laughs> get, give it a week, Corey. Well, they're going to get hurt, but you got to. If they're all out there, Corey, on paper, you get excited, but <clears throat> we'll make sure that everybody that's out there and the guys that we end up with on the on the final roster, um, you, you have to. You know, you got to have a pair and a spare at every position and. Trying to find guys that play with speed, violence, and versatility. And part of that versatility is going and playing another position, um, taking a look at some of these inside linebackers that can that can help us out at Sam or on the edge, and you know just starting to build a roster and, and form a team. So, um, but for those guys, for I mean, worked extremely hard. You know, what I mean, to get back out there and never having had a, a knee surgery or gone through that. You know, there's got to be a mental. Uh, aspect to it. There's got to be one excitement, uh, but two, you know, there's got to be some some hurdles that you get over that that maybe the apprehension and you know, didn't look like it, you know, anything affected him. And, and and Harold worked extremely hard to to make sure that he was back out there. When it comes about to Jack that right Gibbons, tackle position. You talked about Jack Gibbons and being one of the off-season award winners. Last year he went from practice squad and he had the green dot at the end of the year. What's kind of been the continued acceleration that he's done? Just think his, you know, he's a he's a tall, linear, lengthy player, and 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 I think he worked extremely hard to to improve his lower body strength. Um, you know, was was running just as well, uh, was running better than he ran last year, just from a, a tracking standpoint. Not that that's the end all, be all, but you know, he knows what to do. He communicates. He's a good communicator, um, and he's where he's supposed to be. Sorry, Kayla. No, you're fine. Uh, with the right tackle position again, obviously. I guess the knock on him coming out of the draft was maybe just a little bit more of that mean side of him. How do you kind of look at this guy and what he needs to continue to do to, to have a chance to win that position? Um, well, you know, Jalen made a great impression on, on us in, at his visit. You know, Jalen's a talented player. Jalen's a, a, a smart player. He can handle uh, different installations and, and things. And, you know, just his focus is continuing to be there and really – you know, our conversations uh, are, are a lot of the times personal, but I'll tell you this, like, he he just has to realize how good he can be uh, and not get frustrated uh, by making mistakes. You know, we're going to we're gonna coach mistakes. Hopefully we're not coaching the same ones over and over again, uh, but just making sure that that effort there is there and the finish is there. Mike, how have you seen Traylon and Chick specifically, their mentalities maybe elevate to – the level of expectations you're going to have for them this season is they're going to be a big part of your offense, obviously. Yeah, I think there's a confidence level that goes up when you string plays together or string days together or, you know, that, that has to happen. You know, when, when you're, when you're get, trying to get open in this league and you're trying to catch the football, uh, there's got to be a confidence level. I think that's high for them physically. I think that they're, you know, young players who, you know, put good work in uh, throughout the offseason, you know, both of those guys did, and uh, 
you know, again, just getting started, but, you know, trying to find pieces where those guys can help us and, and you know, get the ball in their hands. Mike, I know you spoke on this earlier, but um, how important is this ramp up period before, you know, next week when you get the pads on to really get going? Well, you can't waste the days. You have to, you know, make sure that there's an acclimation, right? You have to, to get out there and you have to figure out, you know, what's important and, and the individual and, and making sure that you're getting a little bit of team in and then we'll continue to ramp it up. Um, but you have to be able to practice with speed. You have to be able to take care of each other, stay off the ground, stay away from the quarterback, all those things without pads. You know, we have to be able to run the football uh, without pads on and practice so that we can get work and, and work our offense and, and all those things that come along with it. So, you know, I've said this ad nauseum that great teams know how to practice. They can practice uh, with speed, without pads on. You put pads on, guys are still staying up, guys aren't flopping around. So, um, we got off to a good start. We'll just have to, you know, keep stringing days together. Are your vets in the hotel? Our vets, uh, op- there are some vets that are in the hotel. Monday- Their option or your option? Optional. Optional. Is Monday the first day with pads too? I think so. The uh, decision. To I don't. Know, it doesn't. You know, what I mean, I'm not being funny, Joe. I just. It's first I'm day focused allowed. on. To, I'm focused on tomorrow and the meetings at one o'clock. Uh, the decision to bring A.J. Moore back, just what did you uh, like about him in the limited time before the injury last year? And Great energy, great spirit. You know, could, could be a disruptive, productive uh, special teams player. Um, you know, we got to find gunners. I mean, we, we think we've got a punter that's going to carry the football down the field. And so this isn't uh, 42 yards and 42 by 42. You know, we got to have some guys that can beat some double teams and you know, AJ did make an impression on us, and it was tragic that he got hurt uh, <clears throat> as early as he did last year. And he worked hard; he worked extremely hard. He came back, and he's excited for the opportunity, and uh, we're excited to give it to him. You mentioned the good start and the energy today. Anything else specifically that stood out to you today, Mike? I just I look at operation, Joe. I look at demeanor, and you know, maybe there's some good plays, there's some bad plays, whatever. It's you know. One side's going to have a good play. One side's going to have a bad play. I, I just look at overall tempo of practice, the urgency, you know, going from drill to drill, special teams to, you know, indie and indie and into seven on seven and group and being able to string those together and not have a lull. And I felt like, you know, we, we carried through most of the day. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike.